The Goat Owls is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week eight. We are here every Wednesday afternoon with this video. We got a good slate this week. Let's take a look at what I got. Thursday night football, the Vikings versus the Rams, I think could be a pretty solid game. You would have to think the Rams are going to start picking it up here soon as they get healthier. Cooper Cup going to play in this game. Most likely, I would expect them to play. Vikings finally got their first loss. Do they start to slip up a little bit? They, you know, maybe the defense isn't quite as good with Blake Cashman out, but in the Vikings recover here, they are the favorites, but you could argue the odds are against them. If you look at the, there's actually only been 20 Thursday night football games where the away team has to travel two time zones over. Two time zones over, and they've only won 20% of those matchups. So if you look at it that way, not so good looking for the Minnesota Vikings, but I do think they're the better team. The Rams didn't look so hot on offense against the Raiders last week, and then the offense picks up a little bit this week, but don't think they'll be able to stop the Minnesota Vikings offense. I think they'll be effective, especially through the air in this one. So they win 27-23 to in bounce back. Still waiting for Hawkinson to come back. They could add another big-time weapon for Minnesota here. So wouldn't put any money. I was tempted the Vikings minus 2.5 because just looking at the matchup, the Vikings should have no problem on offense. They can create a turnover or two on defense. They stopped the run pretty well, so Kyron Williams shouldn't go too crazy. Matchup favors them, but because the whole Thursday night and far travel thing, that the odds are kind of against Minnesota, I'd probably stay away from that one, but I do have them winning. On to the Sunday slate of games. This is probably the toughest one to pick on the week. A really good matchup that I cannot wait for. The Eagles versus the Bengals. I have the Eagles winning 27-24. Two teams that we're still trying to figure out. Like, we know these are good teams. But we also know they could be a lot better than what they are looking like right now, uh, you know, based on how they played this year. Both defenses starting to pick it up recently, but are they for real? The Bengals defense really struggled early in the year. Still wanting a little bit more from that Eagles offense. In the last couple of weeks, the Bengals offense hasn't really been so great, but it has been super explosive throughout most of the year. So could get some things going here. Could see it going either way. I spot some key differences you know the, the things that split these two teams up the most probably going to be the running game uh really on both sides of the ball the Bengals running game really isn't super existent it's because they're a pass first team and the Eagles stop the run very well while the Eagles are one of the very best rushing attacks in football and the Bengals I'm not I'm still not trusting that run defense it was a problem last year it's a problem this year they were okay you know maybe last week but you know, against the Browns, but I'm just not fully trusting them to stop the run. So that'll be the slight difference to help me with my pick here in what is a tough, tough game to pick. I'll go with the Eagles 27 24. Yeah, I can see them, I can see both teams scoring in the 30s just because the lack of defense in this one and the high powered offenses. I also could see a lot of running clock, the Eagles doing their thing on the ground, just draining the clock, giving Joe Burrow and that explosive offense limited chances. So could we see less scoring than expected? We're going to, we kind of get into that part of the season where it's a little bit cooler of weather. I don't think it's going to be too cold out there this week, but could that be a factor in resulting in more defense? But uh, signs point towards there's being some offense this game, 27, 24 Eagles is what I got. I would throw a few bucks on the Eagles money line at plus 120, at least at the time of recording this was plus 120 because I think they have a decent shot to win because of that running game and it's definitely worth the, worth the shot there. Ravens and Browns. The Ravens are on a roll right now, and the Browns are switching to Jameis Winston. And Winston can kind of give them some life. They'll, they'll have a little bit more explosive plays than they had with Deshaun Watson, but they actually might have more turnovers where I think the Ravens could get their hands on the ball a couple times. Uh, Nick Chubb, second week back, but the Ravens stopped the run at a very high level. I know the Browns play pretty solid defense, but this could be a similar matchup for the Browns as the, com as the Commanders, you know, that game. So... I think the, Lamar has another solid day. I know the division games, especially away for the Ravens, could be a little tricky, but all signs point towards the Ravens having a big win. I know eight and a half is a little much, so definitely would not bet on that line, but I do have them winning 30-16 to 16 in this game. Another big spread, the Lions favored by 11. I have them covering that, even though maybe it's a little bit too much to put money on, but I have them winning 27-13. to 13. The Titans do play pretty solid defense, but the Lions might have the best offense in football so I think they'll, they'll have no problem they'll get rolling here and the, I, I know the Lions don't have the greatest defense on the planet but I just not trusting the Titans offense to get going they just traded DeAndre Hopkins uh, and they traded Ernest Jones a line their linebacker so they're kind of in sell mode it kind of puts that it does something to the energy any any momentum I know they don't have, they don't have much that the team has but 
you know, knowing that they're they're not going to win anything right now. Now it's kind of feeling like a, it's a fact, maybe for some of those players at least, because well, how, how this team is uh, going about business right now, which I don't blame them for trading away players and just trying to get some picks. But just don't have too much expectations on that offense, especially. I mean, what they do do pretty well. Uh, Tony Pollard's looked pretty solid. He's ran the ball well, but the Lions have one of the best run defenses in football, so there's really nothing going for the Titans here. Lions win 27-13. You know, there's a chance the Titans defense plays decent in this one and keeps the lines a little lower than that, lower than expected. But this is how I think things could go in this game. Cardinals and Dolphins could be a damn good one this week. This is with Tua playing my prediction. I fully expect Tua to play. All signs point towards that. I have Miami winning 26-23, but a little bit tricky to predict. Cardinals are sneaky. Some weeks they look good. They can run the football with James Conner and Kyler Murray. The, the Dolphins have struggled to stop the run. They haven't played the most explosive offenses recently either. So this is a new challenge for the Dolphins defense compared to recent weeks. I do think the Cardinals run the ball very effectively. They have to stay in the game, though. If they get down multiple scores, they're going to have to throw, throw, throw. It's not going to go as well because it's predictable, and the Dolphins are worse stopping the run than versus the pass. But I do think the Cardinals can win this game because they can run well and because Everything's kind of new for Miami. I mean, it's a little little bit of rust has to be there for Tua, but maybe the whole offense because maybe is there – I still think there's got to be a connection there. They played together for, for some time now, but there could be a little bit of rust. The reason I don't want to pick the Cardinals, it seems like, yeah, they're very inconsistent. It feels like almost every other week. You know, last week was their good week, so you just can't – they can't stay consistent right now. And it is a very tough game plan. Miami's been without Tua, and it's – made guys like Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle almost non-existent, non-factors, right? So you have to game plan, try to game plan for that, like that Tua offense, high-powered passing attack. They go a lot of tempo, uh, probably more than anyone, you know, if Tua's feeling up to it. But they have a solid run game. There's a collection of running backs there that can play, and the Cardinals do struggle to stop the run just like the Dolphins. So I'm going to go Miami. Home field advantage is a legit thing there for them as well. They're at home. Extremely tough game plan for the Cardinals, but they could win because the ground, the, their run game, and maybe the rust of Tua Tungavailoa and company here. But uh, I will take the Dolphins, and it's a really good line at three. I have the Dolphins winning by three. But I could see the Cardinals winning, so if I have to pick against the spread, I would probably take the points with the Cardinals because, again, we, we could see a scenario with them winning because they're a pretty decent team. This one should be a very interesting one to watch this week. Jets and Patriots, the Jets are really struggling right now. A big surprise against the Steelers last week, giving up that many points. So is the defense going to start taking hit as they potentially get Reddick back pretty soon? I think the defense can be fine. Uh, you know, I like Drake May. I think there's more. Uh, it's more of an explosive offense with him, but he could have his struggles against a really good pass defense. The Patriots are going to try to stick to the ground game and control the clock and try to pull off the upset that way. When we saw these two teams match up a couple weeks ago, the Jets looked dominant. That's the only time this year they looked really good. Literally the only time. So I, I like the Jets' chances in this one. I have them winning 23-13. I think that pass defense is a little bit a little bit more. It's it's really an NFL. It kind of, kind of sounds stupid, but an NFL zone defense, like a complex defense for a, a young, raw quarterback in Drake May. So probably the reason they only score around 13 points. So I have the Jets in that one. But it's a big spread. Wouldn't touch it. You know, if you're a betting man, Falcons versus Bucks. The Bucks wearing those clean throwbacks, so maybe they get some energy because of that. But what they're going to be without Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, that is absolutely brutal. So I have to lean with the Falcons. These two teams played each other a few weeks ago. We had an instant classic. We had a shootout, a comeback for the Falcons that went to overtime where they pulled it off. Kirk Cousins threw up for over 500 yards. So neither defense can make stops really in in, in that game for the most part. So I really thought about another shootout, like I thought about 30 to 24 or so. But at the same time, the Bucks game plan has to be pound the football and, and just take your time. And they did well against the Falcons last time running the football. They're going to go back to that without their star receivers, but they're not going to go as fast. They're going to take their time. They're going to drain the clock. They know without a couple things, without their two receivers, they have to do that with, because they can't really stop anybody right now. And they surely cannot stop the Falcons. That's been proven they can't stop Drake London ever, it seems like. Because of all that, they want to limit the Falcons' chances. They want to run the ball. They want to take their time. So for that game plan, I think it's a little less scoring than expected, but the Bucks can score in one play with just a simple handoff, and the Falcons can still air it out. Those receivers, Bijan getting going a little bit more. 
uh, and they can score certainly in a play as well. So there'll still be some sc- some scoring in this game, but just can't overthink it. Again, the Bucks could that that's the Bucks' way to victory and why they can win. Just run the ball and limit the Falcons' chances, and they could win. But don't want to overthink it. The Bucks are missing two key key pieces, star receivers. And that's an issue. It makes things a little bit easier for the Falcons. So I will take the Falcons 27-23. And I strongly considered betting the Falcons minus 2.5. I do like it. I think they cover. But again, the Bucs really can control things on the ground. And the Falcons looked pretty bad against a weaker defense last week. You know, a little sloppy. So does that show up again as they are away in this game? And it's always weird with these games where they play, you know, the division games where they play each other this soon after the other one. Like the Falcons are going to try to do the same thing because it worked for them, but the Bucks are going to try to tweak things up. How do we win this game? You know, how, how do we do something slightly different than last time? And that's why teams split a lot in these cases. So it is a little sketchy, but don't want to overthink it. Got the Falcons 27-23. Packers versus Jags. The Jags maybe got some momentum last week beating up on the Patriots. The Packers only favored by four in this game it almost seems like a trap because that is a surprising line I figured they would be favored by at least six six and a half seven seven and a half somewhere around there so I have I like the Packers minus four I take my chances on that Vegas is kind of making saying it's a trap the Jags could get going they have the talent to do so Packers do seem like a different team right now home versus away it's still to be determined I mean they always had a pretty good home field advantage in Lambeau so could that be a big factor? I'm not really too worried about it. The Jags defense is struggling, you know, against the pass. They run, they're pretty predictable. They run too much man coverage. Jordan Love and those were speedy receivers and, and, you know, Josh Jacobs, very good offensive line. They will pick that apart. They're going to score some points. Got them scoring 31 and the Packers defense has been picking it up since Alexander came back. So I got the Jags who will do it. They still could have an explosive offense. We see it here and there. You know, it's not like they're playing the Bears defense again, but uh, 31-20 is what I got here. Could be a trap game. I I just don't see how, though. The Packers are so much better. They're going to dice up that Jaguars defense. So I bet Green Bay minus four alone, and I would tease Green Bay plus three and a half. If they lose, it's going to – I don't see it, but it would be super, super tight. I mean, two points or less maybe, uh, you know, top, you know, biggest loss would be three. So that's, you know, hence the three and a half. But – Packers line is pretty appealing uh, for this week. So I have them taking care of business. They're uh, one of the top teams in the NFL, in my opinion. Colts versus Texans round two. Last time during that game, I noticed a lot. There was so many explosive plays that resulted in a little bit more scoring than expected. I think we're going to get less explosive plays. No Nico Collins for the Texans. Colts offense, you know, struggling to get some things going right now. I think Jonathan Taylor, if he is back ready to play, then I think he could have a pretty solid outing. I think Mixon is the best bet to have explosive plays for the Texans as well where I think he'll run well once again. But I'm expecting a lot of running clock. I think these teams will focus on getting their running backs the ball as the matchup favors them. And just, again, a less, lot less explosive plays through the air compared to last time. You know, the, the Texans were sleep, slipping up and letting Anthony Richardson have insane type plays. Just not really expecting that again. So that therefore, I'd go the under of 46 points. I feel pretty good about somewhere around this scoreline of 24-17 to 17, Houston in the second game with these AFC South teams. Saints versus Chargers. The Saints are extremely beat up. Now they probably get Chris Olave back, but offensive line's beat up. You have Rattler back there at the quarterback position. The defense isn't playing nearly as well. Chargers defense has been playing very, very well in games. So I got them winning 23-10. to I could see Kamara having a good game. Maybe the reason the Saints score a little bit more because I do think you can run the ball on the Chargers. But uh, I, I think they... The Chargers kind of get a good lead early. They've been throwing the ball a little bit better, so they get a decent lead early, and that could remove the run game from the Saints. But if the run game stays in there the whole way, I mean, not only are the Saints going to cover, but they could pull off an upset. But I, you know, Chargers got a good got to get a good lead early. The Saints have to stay in the game earlier throughout throughout the game. Really, I'd go under in this one. A lot of running clock. And just two defensive teams, you know, don't expect the Saints to score a lot a lot of points unless Kamara goes absolutely wild. And I would tease the Chargers minus two and a half as I see them almost guaranteed to win by a field goal or more here. But yeah, 23-10 Chargers, what I got. Bills versus Seahawks should be a good one. A little bit of a tricky one as well. Both teams really struggling to stop the run. Two explosive teams, and they can even make plays on defense, but they are struggling to stop the run. So it could be a run fest here with a lot of explosive plays, and both teams can make explosive plays through the air when they need to as well. DK is injured, which is a 
is a tough one because if the if the Bills had you know you, when you play the Seattle Seahawks you have to account for those deep ball receivers you know all those receivers but the Bills really struggle to stop the run so then Kenneth Walker w- would run all over them I still think he does I think K nine runs wild on them but I also think the Bills I think Josh Allen James Cook and Ray Davis looks awesome I think all three of those guys run very well uh, you know on, on the Seattle Seahawks the Bills. They have potential to beat up on teams as well. So I can see that scenario. I can see the Seahawks winning by like a field goal as well. So it's, it's an interesting game. The, somebody's run defense has to step up. We know both rushing off that's going to play well. You know, they're not going to stop themselves, right? So it's just whose run defense steps up. I'm going to take Josh Allen, James Cook, Ray Davis. Like I said in this one, Amari Cooper brings another uh, factor while DK is, uh, you know, a little beat up. So we'll take the Bills 31-24. High scoring, explosive plays. Uh, that's another one I can't wait for. Panthers and Broncos, another big spread, and I have the favorite covering 24 13. It could even be less for the Panthers, even though their offense has some moments, but the Broncos defense is very, very solid, very stout defense. And it might be Bryce Young for the Panthers because Andy Dalton was involved in a car accident. So hopefully he's doing okay, but obviously didn't practice today. So. That makes it tough for the Panthers playing a good defense. So, and the Broncos should get some offense going again. They're not going to... I mean, they've put up some decent points recently, but I don't think they'll go too crazy in this one. I mean, I could see them scoring as much as 31, but 24-13 is what I'm feeling. They cover that nine. It's a lot of points to actually put money on there, but the Broncos, the matchup favors them because they. the only thing the Panthers got going for them is sometimes they're pretty good on offense like they're okay on offense they're pretty explosive especially on the ground but the Broncos play very good defense and it feels like anybody can score in the Panthers so the matchup definitely favors Denver at home in that altitude Chiefs and Raiders yeah the Chiefs just added DeAndre Hopkins could he get on the field this week I think it's certainly possible but they're very beat up you know they don't have a ton going on offense right now Mahomes is even struggling a little bit but doing enough they're undefeated I think Mahomes is gonna be fine he could click at any time and they can go for 40 points in this game it's definitely possible but the offense just a little beat up. They're not scoring a ton of points. Their defense is much better than their offense, and the Raiders typically play random games. They typically play the Chiefs a little tough, especially their defense. It was the last time we saw them, actually. We saw that, so I don't think a ton of points for the Chiefs here. I, I mean, I could see a scenario where they score a lot. I'm just not really counting on it. just feels like a defensive game. The Chiefs kind of can coast to victory in this one as the Raiders do not have enough offense, and the Chiefs have very good defense. So 20 to 13, 10 seems like a lot, but again, there is a scenario the Chiefs cover that. But I, I would bet the under 41 and a half. I, I just the big big factor in this is I just do not see the Raiders scoring enough points to participate in hitting the over on the 41 and a half. I think what is their maximum? 16 points feels like right now, and I, the Chiefs' offense just really isn't fully there right now. And they don't need to be in a game like this. So again, they can just roll clock and coast to victory. So 20 to 13, kind of like the under. Bears and Commanders, a good one, but a uh, possible battle between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, and that that's the tricky part when predicting this game. We don't know if Jaden Daniels is going to play. I assumed he was. It sounded like he was going to be okay. There was already reports on that later on Sunday and in the Monday, but he didn't even practice. Today's Wednesday, and he didn't practice, but I feel like put some extra padding, put that rib cage on there, and, and he possibly can play, but you don't want to risk your franchise, your legit franchise quarterback, so I can understand that, but... I, I'm not an injury expert. I'm wrong on predicting and who's playing or not all the time. It's you know tough to do. Only those teams know. Only the players know. Sometimes the players don't even know what the, what the staff wants to do. But I'm going to say he plays. I don't know. I know it's Wednesday. He didn't practice, but so it's a little tricky. So if Jaden Daniels plays, I'm going to predict who are the underdogs right now, probably because Vegas is trying to figure out if he's playing or not. But I'm going to predict the home team 26-23. It is a new challenge for both these teams. The Bears... Haven't been playing the best of teams. Their only their only wins are against one win teams. While the Rams have two wins now, uh, and so do the Jags have two wins now. But the time of them beating them, uh, so they, a little bit more of a challenge of a tougher opponent here, a team that has a very explosive offense. But I do think the Bears have arguably the best defensive football, and the Commanders really haven't seen that yet, right? They haven't been tested like this, and Jane Daniels a little beat up, but. Bears, you got to show me you can beat some good teams here. The commander's been a little bit more impressive, and they're at home in this game. It's a, you know, more of an explosive offense for the Bears to face off against. I'll go 26-23. I think a, some good offense from both teams into the red zone. Then maybe some more field goals. But that's if Jaden Daniels plays. You see at the bottom down here, uh, no Daniels. I'll, go, I'll take the Bears 24-17. Defense wins that game. And the commander's defense looked a little rough earlier in the year, but they're really picking it up. But if they go back to being rough, you know, the Bears 
going to score some points. So which commander's defense is going to show up? Which Bears offense is going to show up? We know the Bears defense will show up. We know the commander's offense will show up if Daniels plays. So it's a very interesting matchup here. Uh, I would tease commanders plus seven and a half. I would, you know, I would definitely do that if Daniels plays. I would almost consider it Mariota, but too risky. Uh, and I like if Daniels plays, uh, betting on Washington plus three, because if they lose, it's going to be really tight. But uh, and I, you could take that, and that's why it's a little risky because you don't know if Daniels is going to play. You want to take that now because if all of a sudden Daniels is playing it, the Lions going to you know, swing a little bit there. So a little bit of a tricky one to predict this early in the week, but uh, it's just a newer test for the Chicago Bears if they pass this one. Then, hey, now I know they can beat some good teams here, but we'll see if they uh, will even see Jaden Daniels here. Sunday night football, the Cowboys versus the 49ers. The 49ers are very beat up, so you do have to monitor some injuries with this one. But I I do like San Francisco. I like them minus 4.5. It's a really good matchup for them. I'd say that prediction is factoring that Debo or Juwan Jennings, at least one of them's got to play. If they're both out, then we got problems. I would not say bet on San Francisco, but I feel good that I think both those guys actually could play. My money would be on both those guys playing, but I'm not the injury expert, but they need those guys, and Pearsall could step it up. But the big thing here, well, the Niners aren't really, they're kind of like the Cardinals right now. They're not too consistent, but it seems like every other week with them, one week they look really good and not so much. They are, but I do know where they're con- they're consistent is primetime football. This team, you know, at home especially, Sunday night football, it's a Niners type of game here, and they're playing the Cowboys who are beat up as well. Not as beat up, but beat up, and they are struggling on defense. The Cowboys really struggle with those physical, you know, punch you in the mouth, run the football at a high level, and they can also be a little sneaky and throw the ball downfield, you know, feed off that play action, feed off the run game. It's the Niners game, man. It's the Niners game, so it's a bad matchup for the Cowboys. Niners are beat up on defense too. The defense has been playing decent though, surprised, you know, somewhat surprisingly. But I think the Cowboys off the bye, they get some offense going. They'll have some explosive plays. The offense really has been struggling to put up big points though, so not too many there. But this game says the Niners, Jordan Mason, George Kittle, these guys have good games here as they win, uh, you know, because of their physicality at home, prime time. It's made for the Niners. So 31 23, 49ers. But again, one of those receivers has got to play between Debo and Juwan Jennings. I, I'm thinking both those guys play, but we'll see. But I like the Niners this week in a game that's made for them. Monday night football should be a defensive battle. I know the Steelers actually had some offense against a really good defense in the Jets on Sunday. I do think a lot of it was in the second half and some clutch plays. I don't think we'll see a ton of that again, but who knows? We could. The Giants' defensive line is legit. It, it can play. The Giants have been holding some teams to you know, some limited points. The issue is the Giants offense really struggling and they're playing against one of the very best defenses in football. So I think low scoring and if the Giants offense is turning it over and can't really can't get anything going and the, and the Steelers offense is constantly on the field and the Steelers offense could score some more points. But I think Dexter Lawrence and company could give Russ some issues here and there. So 17-13, 20 to 13, somewhere around that range. I, I really think more defense. Steelers are wearing those clean black uniforms, but 17 13 is what I'm feeling. Six and a half is a tricky one because Giants could lose by seven. You lose, but it seems like a lot of points for a team that typically, I know not last week, but keeps things close, plays some solid defense. Uh, I would use the Giants plus 13 and a half around that range in a teaser. It's a potential teaser leg uh, for you guys there. Uh, but got Pittsburgh handling business. Two good defenses, the better defense, home prime, another home primetime game for the Steelers, and just not enough offense from the Giants. And here is kind of recapping my picks against the spread. A lot of favorites this week. Minnesota minus two and a half. Uh, odds are against the team traveling on Thursday night if they have to travel that far. So that's an interesting one, but um, just a better team matchup favors them. Eagles plus three. I got them winning. Baltimore Ravens minus eight and a half. It's a big spread. It's a little scary because the Browns play pretty decent defense, but a bad matchup. Ravens are rolling teams lately. Detroit minus 11 should roll the Titans. Cardinals plus three. I actually had them losing by three, but I didn't have a chance to win. So if you had to, which I do here with with these picks, I'm making myself take a pick against the spread. I would take the points in that scenario. Jets minus seven. Big line, a little scary. Uh, Falcons minus two and a half. Bucks missing those star receivers. Green Bay minus four, I really like. Houston minus five. Looks pretty solid. Chargers minus seven. It's a lot, but Saints, given their uh, current situation, given the circumstances here. Bills minus three. I mean, I could see the Seahawks winning by a little bit in that game. So, but I have the Bills winning by seven. Broncos should cover the nine, but it is big. Raiders ten. That's kind of where we're drawing the line. The ten points. Uh, Washington plus three, and that's if Daniels 
uh, does play. I definitely like the Commanders plus three if Daniels does play. Niners, I love minus four and a half. And I think the points with the Giants plus six and a half. Wish, wish it was at seven, but even six and a half seems like a little much for two teams that don't have a lot, a whole lot of offense and, and pretty good uh, defense there. But uh, that, those are my picks. If you want to see straight up picks with some other guys with me, make some good predictions. We had a lot of fun while doing it. That video for week eight is already up on the channel. Uh, we have power rankings. We have trade videos, more trade videos to come as the deadline approaches. But that will do it for this one. Please like, subscribe to Nokia Zon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.